Hello and welcome to Abingdon Marina, where a viewer had offered me the use of his boat for a few days. And I was not to be alone. We recognise that van. Could it be I'm having company? Yes, it's my fellow boating and camper van friend Lorna. We headed on to the pontoons to the boat. It's a former Norfolk Broads cruiser. They have an unusual flattish design with a sliding sunroof. There's a stubby bow which you can enter the boat through. There's the sliding hatch. After some tuition, we were off. Well, sort of. It's not going anywhere. Are you in neutral? I don't know. How will I know? Um, Did you press the button? I pressed the button. Well, yeah. that puts it into neutral. Oh, so don't press the don't button. Don't press the button. Oh. There we go. Now, you, oh. now we're in the, Oh, there we go. That's probably why we weren't going back, because we were in neutral. Yeah. Pixie Bell, that's a nice name for a boat. Now we just had the small matter of finding the exit from the marina, which was apparently hiding behind some trees. Aha! Trees! That's fairly responsive. It does turn well, doesn't it? It's like driving a really slow car. Or like a van. Yeah. How much are you feeling the wind? Um, no, it's fine. I think it's fine. It it, it's very, very heavy to steer, like, it feels like it's not going anywhere, even though we are... Which way are we turning? We were turning right, so with a brief check left to make sure nothing was coming, we headed downstream. This is the River Thames. Yes, the same one that flows through London, and which you may have seen on my recent videos. But we were a long way from the capital here, about 50 miles as the crow flies, and over the course of four days we thought we'd make it as far as Windsor, probably most famous for its royal castle. Being on a river doesn't mean any lack of canal narrowboats though. We saw loads, and we've both filmed videos of the trip, I'll leave a link to Lorna's in the video description. We thought this was a good omen. But then we looked out of the window and saw this. Terrifying. Well, actually just a warning that we were coming up to a weir, around the side of which is a lock which we'd need to go through. How are you feeling about the danger? Danger. I wanted to carry on that way, but David's like, no, don't do that. Be safe, be sensible, turn left. Is it? Locks on the Thames usually have staff to operate them, which would be a novelty for canal folk like us, but other than that we didn't know what to expect, and little did we know what we were in for. Ahead was a hire boat, which would go into the lock first. They pulled up to the lock landing, as did we, and after a short wait we went in behind them. I've skipped the lock itself because Lorna and I both felt we were not made to feel welcome by the locky. It was not the greatest start to our holiday. A little subdued, we carried on. The next lock was self-service, and we waited for another boat to come through. British viewers may appreciate the name of the boat that was coming out of the lock. I must say, the locks here are kept immaculately. We secured our lines, this violent, turbulent descent was a struggle to deal with, as you can imagine. It was tough going, but we made it somehow. Forward gear was engaged. Yes, really this time. And we headed out past a lovely narrowboat waiting to go up. There are some private moorings below the lock. We
we'd carried on under the rather fine Clifton Hampton Bridge. more peril of unknown nature. The houses along the Thames are largely huge, rather nice, and have price tags to match. And private boat houses. The hire boat had vanished and the river was surprisingly devoid of traffic. I'll give you a boat tour in a second, but first... It is quite the enjoyable experience being back on a boat again and also a wide beam boat that you steer with a steering wheel from the front. It's a whole different experience. I'm also reacquainting myself with the Nicholson's Guide and what all the little symbols mean. But do you know what? I don't want to navigate with the Nicholson's Guide. I'm a salty seafaring sailor. I navigate with the stars and the sun and the wind whistling past my ears, as every sailor knows. In order to do that kind of navigation, you need a good chronometer. And I have a brand new chronometer. This is a Holskern watch and as you guessed they are the sponsor of today's episode. Now I was genuinely looking to buy another watch and by complete coincidence they sent me an email saying hey we'd like to talk about our watches and I said well okay but I only promote things I like so send me a watch to have a look at and uh, if I like it I'll do the thing. Well they said go onto our website and have a look and they have got I think it's something like over a thousand designs. They do watches, they do jewellery, they do sunglasses. Holstern is an Austrian company based in Vienna, relatively new, started in 2016, and they have made over a million sales to date. They've got shipping worldwide, it's free, it's express, and they deal with all the customs. So no matter where you are in the world, the product will get you no problem. If you are in Austria or Germany, they've actually got 10 physical stores, and you can go and look at the products as well. But if you're not in Austria or Germany, obviously go on the website, browse it, there is so much to see. When they said, just pick a watch and we'll send one, I didn't know which one to pick because I liked so many of them. Now this one has actually got, on the stopwatch bit, a little bit of genuine meteorite. They do make their products with some interesting materials, including a lot of um, FSC certified woods so that they like making things from wood, but do not worry, they're not chopping down Amazonian rainforest. It's all properly certified. They are offering a 15% limited short-term discount just for the next couple of weeks if you use my code, which is cruising15, and use the link in the video description below. I say this is a short-term offer next couple of weeks, so if you're looking for a new watch or you know someone who's looking for a new watch or you're doing some very advanced Christmas shopping or something like that. Look, go and have a browse. It's quite remarkable how many different varieties they've got. I think you will find something that you very much will enjoy. A boat tour then. Here's the bow. Looking in from there is the saloon and dining area, which also converts to an extra bed. The steering position is on the other side, and behind that along the edge is the kitchen. The first of two bedrooms is opposite. This was Lorna's room. There's a cupboard and an ensuite shower room as well as a compact double bed. The boat's engine sits in the middle of the boat behind that box. And at the back there's a second bedroom which is much the same as the first. My bed. And again an ensuite shower and toilet. At the back there's a bit of space for getting on and off or pushing bodies overboard. Believe it or not, that hill is, I think, called Whittenham Clumps, which you have to agree is a fabulous name. That, as every ornithologist knows, is a clump of geese. They're practicing for the synchronized takeoff championships. Ten out of ten. Another narrowboat, 
good to see so many canal boats on the river. Being experienced Thames boaters to the tune of precisely two hours by now, we were unfazed by this sign's prediction of our imminent demise and headed around to the next lock. We've now done two further locks which were unattended, no lock keeper, just us and that other boat in front who were kind enough to press the buttons of the automated system and it's been an absolutely calm, trauma-free, stress-free, happy experience, I'm pleased to say. I asked Lorna how she was getting on. I'm not sure if I'm a steering wheel boat convert just yet, but I'm definitely a sitting down boat convert. Couldn't do this on a narrow boat. Another small cruiser approached with waving the order of the day. We reached the village of Benson where there was yet another lock. Perhaps we should have looked closer at the map before we started, but both Lorna and I were surprised by how many locks there were on the river. Coming out the other side you see the line of boys warning boaters not to approach the weir, although unless you're a salmon that's probably not a tempting route anyway. It was nearly four o'clock and as you can't just moor anywhere on the river like you can on the canals, we started thinking about looking for a space to stop for the night. The map had these marked as moorings, but it turned out they were private. At the upcoming bridge, we warned children in kayaks of our approach. Rowing clubs are like the Starbucks of the Thames. There is one everywhere you look. Admittedly, it's no canal, but the river can still be very pretty. Hidden in the bank, this is what we were going to try to do. I rather like the shape of that narrowboat, they don't make them like that anymore. Our search went on as the light began to fade. Well, OK, it was only late afternoon, but it felt as though time was of the essence. Had we been bolder, we might have tied up there like that one, but this was day one and we weren't quite sure where we could and couldn't stop. The guidebook turned out to be little help in finding moorings. All these private gardens are not places you can stop. And then, suddenly, we spotted a likely looking field and squished the boat into the bank. Hooray! Day one a success, mostly. This was our view, a popular spot for dog walkers as it turned out. Whether we're OK here and who on earth this field belongs to, I have absolutely no idea. But hopefully we'll be OK for one night. The swan did not agree. It was quite emphatic. At least until we tried bribery in the shape of food for its chicks. What are you feeding them, Lorna? Um, cheddars. Jacob's cheddars. That well-known swan food. Hey, babies. Hey, go, baby. Oh, that one didn't like it. Go on. Go, on, baby swan. There you go. Morning, Lorna. How did you sleep? Not bad. Okie dokie. All set for another day's cruising? I am, yeah. And the weather's the... turned out lovely. What's the plan for today? Um, just go. That's as much as I have planned. Believe it or not, I did take turns at the wheel, but then of course was steering, so mostly didn't film myself. We set off again with hopes high for adventure, 
or at least for somewhere nice to stop for lunch. The weather forecast for the day was torrential rain, but at least to begin with, we seemed to be keeping dry. How nice is this? A riverside home with garden mooring and that lovely Dutch barge. Oh, yes, please. Kel surprise, another lock, this time at Goring, which I always thought was on the south coast, but it turns out that's Goring by sea, and this is Goring on the Thames. There was a lock keeper, and he put us through. Note also the water point here for refilling your tanks. There's no charge. We went under Goring and Streetly Bridge and looked on at the now familiar assortment of boats on the moorings below the lock. It's a rather pretty spot this, like in the middle of a jungle rather than the middle of the home counties. If you're wondering how fast we're going, as it does seem something like a race, it was only five knots over ground, according to the GPS on the boat. Definitely seems faster, though. Look who we found next. It's narrowboat scholar Gypsy, the one I was a passenger aboard for my recent trip through central London, as well as an earlier voyage in Cambridge. I've left links to those videos in the description. Sadly, no one was home. You recall I said a moment ago that there are innumerable rowing clubs on the Thames. Well, this is a not uncommon sight, it turns out. Rowers and chase boats all buzzing around like busy bees. We debated the protocol here. Just ram straight through them and hope they get out of the way. In fact, they were going faster than us and vanished into the distance. This is Whitchurch Lock at Pangbourne in Berkshire. Pangbourne is known as one of the UK's prettiest villages and, being only 45 minutes from London, also one of the most expensive. It was once the home of Kenneth Graham, author of The Wind in the Willows, and was mentioned in Jerome K. Jerome's Three Men in a Boat. After the lock, I wrestled the steering wheel back from Lorna who made me a cup of tea and brought me a biscuit. Call me a wimp, perhaps, but I do like this whole concept of boating without getting rained on. This inside boating lark might catch on. The predicted rain, though it had held off during the morning, was now starting to make its presence felt. We hoped it might pass and were starting to feel a bit peckish. It stopped raining. We've decided to stop for a spot of lunch. The hammering sound you can hear is Lorna putting in a mooring pin, we suddenly came across this odd little tiny sort of boat length stretch where we could stop next to a public path, so we're hoping that's OK. We secured the boat and once again the local swans came to collect the mooring toll. When we set off again for the afternoon it rained some more, so we fired up the musical windscreen wiper. It's not quite Hawaii 5 is it? Just round the bend from Pangbourne is the rather substantial town of Reading, with its suburb Caversham on the North Shore. I looked for any resurrected dodos, but saw only swans and ducks. By now the rain had properly started, and despite steering inside, we still got soaked when we stood on the bow and stern to do Caversham Lock. 
We are both somewhat drowned rats at this point. It's very soggy out there. I, th I think we might stop for the afternoon. The question was where, but our prayers were quickly answered opposite better boating, as we found a convenient little inlet where we could bang a stake into the ground and keep the boat secure for the night. Later that evening, the rain stopped long enough for us to nip to Tesco's, which was right next to where we'd stopped. The sound of the rain pouring was replaced with a pan sizzling. What are we having, Lorna? Food poisoning. Food like poisoning. Cooking. Lovely. Otherwise known as burgers. The adventure will continue in part two. Meanwhile, don't forget to have a look at Holskern's watches, jewellery and sunglasses using the link in the video description and my discount code.